I, I really, 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 uh, really wish that I hadn't been so um, exceptionally tired this morning and yesterday because, God, I want to play more Limbus, but I was too fucking tired to wake up. Anyway, hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. You know, Limbus, here's our background music now. Uh. Okay. 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 Uh, where the fuck do I do? Right. Uh, download all the images, uh, clip sent, go to folders, store everything. Uh, new folder. Two, sure, on that, not save. Cannibal. Oh god, there's so many fuckers. Uh. Mystery bitchy. I definitely, I fucking, I definitely could not get the mystery girl's um, portrait if I was doing this by myself. No way in hell, not without getting massively spoiled. Because, like, I imagine the fucking Fee Water Pants close up. <laughs> I imagine that freaking, um, the wiki doesn't, you know, um, what is it? I imagine the wiki doesn't censor its articles or anything. Like, if you look up fucking, um, Love, Love by his fake name in first chapter, then, like, probably get fucked over. Okay. Okay. Why is there only one? Fine. Search for Lawrence, he comes up with what he actually is. Yep, that fucking sucks. Holy Missy Girl isn't that important. Fuck you. Two secret bitch has a lot of secrets that more than secrets than that. Fuck. Okay. Fucking images up. Okay. Hmm. Oh, right. Save counter is at three. Need to fucking put that here. Very much important. Gotta do that last time. TV Olympus has other tracks. Yeah, but I love this one. It's really fucking good. Have we gotten any headpats yet? I actually can't remember. Did we guys, guys, did we get any headpats? This is very important for everything we ever do. BB. I know, but this one's like really good for background shite. Unless you want me to start playing a melee, melee song in the fucking random link. Oh, god damn it. Mystery bitchery. You know that I know the songs are fucking good. It just doesn't fuck, fuck you. Okay. Um. So, 
got already two people to add onto that. Uh, what is the size again of the ship? Eight. Of course, we would go straight to Millie because he wants to get caught. Fuck you, it's not the case. Also, I do remember that surprisingly enough, like, um, it's, they're cool. I, I got it when I played Library of Runa and the mini songs got claimed. I was like, I'm playing a video game in the copyright section. It's just like, oh, okay, fine. This girl. No. No. Ah, uh, do I already have to add the mystery fucker section? Secrets hoarding snakes? Probably. Serial Groper. I'm going with the name I used in fucking Azure and that clip is referencing here. Because it is still appropriate, as it turns out. Still gropes? Angelica is the one who will grope. Oh, well. The one who, the one still who gropes. You're right, and that is in a slightly wrong pot spot. Two spaces there. Yeah, it was much more uncomfortable in 3D. It also was still very unfucking funny. Angelica doesn't exist, it's a collective new hallucination. Great! Oh god, my eyeballs. Do I have like hair in my eye or something? I feel like I do. What to call you? Both um no um he grew taller I know very tall
Terra 2.0. Long fee. No, if we did long fee, we'd have to do fucking like something like, uh. We'd have to do something like fucking, uh, not. Oh, I can't do that. Long fee, like catch me, pick them up, dark pit. That's hilarious. Oh, uh, no, that doesn't communicate. I want to say she betrayed. Well, the fucking Millennium call her and fee when they. In Code Seal 2, when they got into the fucking things. Tell <laughs> buddy, you when you play another Neptunia sequel, play more Nep. That's for two clips specifically, I'm saying, to play more nep. Um, what was, what did Millium and, and uh, Fee call themselves when they were, uh, when they ended a thing? Just call her tall. Team Tiny. Ah, there we go. Thank you, Espest. Okay, so that that that's for something I was supposed to do now. Uh trade spirits of team tiny. There we go. Gotta put that there. Hey, he's not playing Nep until he gets paid. Oh fuck you. Everyone must play Nep at least for two minutes per day. That rate you might be able to get past the main the main menu. Up to a mod. Alcorp had nothing but Queen of Hatred and finished before playing more now voluntarily. Yeah, you got weird priorities. Yeah, we'll go with it. <laughs> Maybe I'm use the best part that's before the game if it begins. Fuck you. Wait, is that how you would spell Juvie? No, oh, I guess you have one less V. Oh, I'm more modestly glowed. That. I don't know. Anymore. I don't have a full body image of feet V from the last game. Rax, I don't think it's much more modestly glowed. Fucking V apparently likes it. Maybe my state enforcer at this point? Hell yeah. Fucking wears over. It's still like she's got bigger pants. And. Yep, that's about it. Yeah, and better games. Actually, funny moments. Better everything. Awesome stories and characters you care about. Okay, you know. I'm conflicted. Clips is talking down to my glorious Neptune, but he also is talking. Phrasing Project Moon. My conflict is so much. Maybe what the fuck is that name? What do you mean? It's Romelia Scarlet. From the famous video game series Project, uh, T Project Moon Toho. Also, I guess I really do need to add in now the... We got three members. Possibly? Possibly three members. And your secret hiding warning snake. If I can do it.
Tachikun Toho, Total War. God, how long is his name gonna get? Get. Do I just use pure bat black for these fuckers? I don't want to. Looks ugly though. Should I use pure pure that pure, pure black, or should I use something else? Hmm. I'll leave that there for now while I write up these people's. Okay. Vampire. Vampire witch. Witch half blood maiden of the force of animism. Yep, that's about right. Did we? I'm just thinking about now. Did we ever get any information? Did we even know animism existed before uh, the Code Steel series? I'm not entirely sure. I said first of anime. No? I'm pretty sure no? Okay. Tales of Erebonia Folklore, Code Tale 1. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I was like, I don't think I've ever heard it before in the series, so it's like, it, it, I don't know. And it feels weird for people to say, excuse me, to talk about like major elements, and then it's just like, oh yeah, by the way, this has always been a thing. It's not retconning or anything necessarily, but hi, Mr. Vander, who, fuck, who was never ever fucking mentioned before now. be more than two Vanders. I kind of just assumed neither was a fucking only child, honestly, so... So yeah, baby, any guesses what may happen in the reign of the chapter? Can someone? I just realized a portrait clips is missing. Unless he can't get a non-massive fucking spoiler one. Or well, wait, should I get it? Fuck. Guys, should I get a portrait for Mystery Man who killed Mex?
Work on what you have now. Got it. Ow. Okay, okay, okay. My thoughts are getting scattered to the winds as I have like fucking 1200 things I need to, I'm thinking about like fucking putting. God damn me. Need to concentrate. Also, Randy Beater. All right, and that. One only twelve hundred must be chapter one. Ah, Amelia Scott. I swear she's not a vampire. I'm gonna be like, I'm just gonna be fucking kind of sad actually because I would love. Why do I want her to be a vampire? Oh, right. Blood Moon during the fucking beginning cutscenes. Like, that's vampirish. Also, she's a half blood or a full blood of something else. Like, I've, I've, I didn't say this, but I've assumed McBurn is some kind of phoenix or some other ant thing like that that they're full blood of. The mysterious girl and Shirley have the same English VA. Oh, that is a fun fact. Now I'm worried she's gonna grope someone. Well, I mean, she already assaulted Reen, so you know what? It, it, I, I, I guess that's consistent. Did our new gym, bro. Thanks. Yeah, I just remembered him. I'm just like, ah, eh, he's important. And I, I find that so weird still. Like, why? Uh, maybe maybe I'm the weirdo here, but I'd be like, if I met him, I'd be like, oh, hi there. Um, where blank? Uh, what's your name? Like, I I am I am I weird for this? Like, I don't know. I the fact that the class doesn't didn't ask like just strikes me as so odd. It's like, wouldn't you ask someone you just met like what their name is? I don't know. Like, I'm fucking. 
Come on. All right, okay, so I should move you over to, um, hmm. You cross passing words with people all the time without asking all their, the names all the fucking time? Not even meaning? Just when you first meet someone, just like, I'll ask them what their name is. Like, I don't know, so I'm just, in universe, they, in universe, they need to wait for the camera to do the upward pan for the title. Oh, that explains everything, then. Also, I think good boys and girls are gonna get fucking way too big. Wait. Okay. Uh, add the title for this. Broke your domination works. You know, man, you won't, you know, unless the conversation goes long enough, even then you just fucking forget it later because you're shit at remembering names. I'm shit at remembering names too, but I still ask people their names. I just usually forget them. <laughs> That's my issue. I'm not saying it's like a, the biggest problem or anything. It just kind of, it's another thing that confuses me. It takes them a while to remember people's names. Uh, Esper saying they were with you for months before knowing their names. <gasps> okay, I guess I am the weirdo here. Got it. <clears throat> oh my. Getting someone's name is something. You tend to make a point of doing even important or actually like the conversation, you tend to forget it otherwise, or the person asks first. I see. Okay. You know, I'm gonna make, I was gonna make a joke that she, she got her fashion sense from someone really stupid and wearing stupid clothes. But now I'm having a... Rishia? Yeah, okay. Rishia. There we go. This is... A... <laughs> Who's got the stupider outfit? B, the bracer, or Rishia, the assassin? I don't fucking know. No bully fee. Stop. I'm sorry. It's stupid. I have to bring it up. You find me in black, bang me. What, you'll become a child assassin or make me into a child assassin? Can't do it. I'm too old. The answer is Luciola. There are a lot of fucking stupid ones. 
You say uh, Elisa? Now she has some silly outfits. Ah, but I feel like the Elisa, Elisa isn't meant isn't necessarily supposed to be in combat situations. Unlike fucking Rish, huh? Anime ass designs. Emphasis on the ass part. I'm too old to get mind break there. <laughs> That's what I think. The fuck? No, you picture being the black thing that's there, but being BB's personal wiseman works too. But don't don't be a wiseman. Bad thing to be. When, you when I suffer, else corpse stream failures, X coming forth through. Don't bring up that accursed game. Blech. I shouldn't. I should not type that. Now. Oh, that's better. Yeah, that's true. Is this slander to this to this girl? No. No, it fucking isn't. <laughs> I enjoy when Nep7 don't Vav great tail damage to you. <laughs> also something something cats. attacked. I'm saying normally I wouldn't punt a cat, but if this girl was a cat, I'd fucking do it still. I have, as it turns out, I had a lot of save out surely. I 
How's the nepotism? Do you think she would be an enforcer if Maribel didn't become an Angus? I don't think so. Like, like legitimately, I, I need to put this, I need to put this as a thing, okay? Okay, I want you to understand. Why, what the fuck does Shirley have over her dad? Like, they were both fucking there. Her dad is stronger than her. Why the fuck do you take Shirley as an enforcer? Why? She doesn't understand math. Fucking get your math. Mm. Dislike this bitch. Cats when? Hopefully never. Well, we know her dad got the initial offers like, nah, Shirley didn't do that. Sigmund passing the book as usual. God damn it, Sigmund. I prefer to have the math teacher back than having Shirley. Downgrade. Dude. It's still white. They're just waiting for when you can send BB a PMOG to put Singa on the board. Just kidding, unless. But. Celine hides a plot sense of information during directly causing the pop whoops oh wait that already happened last game yep oh Celine Ah, uh, how I do not look forward to encountering that cat again. Oh, is she gonna be any less of a mystery bit cheery? Seriously, she's fucking older, like... The familiar should not know more than the master. Okay. Rip it up. 
Okay, there's all the major portrait people finished for now. Good. Don't look up songs. Don't look up anything. Of course I shouldn't look up anything. It'd be really a bad idea. Can't wait for the worst Kiseki track in the next game. What, does it just a beeps and boops going... That'd be quite bad. Stop taking gnosis. I have no gnosis. I am illegally I am legally clean off gnosis because I never fucking took any gnosis. Stop with these accusations. You are ruining my credit score. Like something someone in Gnosis would say. That's not what's happening. I guess Secret Horring Snakes doesn't have to be that big yet. Coach Seal uh, 3 and 4 is where the soundtrack starts to get mid. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, both of you go are gonna be going over here. There is not enough space there. Bigger. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay, okay. Back to the bones, break everything. Thing in my body. Uh. Okay, body has been broken. I'm ready to go. Now, I didn't add anything about these fuckers before, but I know a bit more about them now, so. Start adding some notes for these fuckers. Oh, just. Suda is still cranking out jams, so not Noto is sounding tired but still consistent, then single be very hit or miss. I I'll assume you're telling me the right thing. Just your opinions from the news as you were talking about something board related. Nah, I, I assumed it was music. I just was like, eh, this fucking. 
Oh, where's Salty Bitch again? Uh, yeah, right here. Okay. Look at the board. It's already getting a bit fucking chaotic again. Great. Lovely. Me death is coming. Oh, am I going to sneeze again? Oh, not again. Oh, stop. Bye. Just finished nights of the old drug of QSA, made you realize how much better Code 2 could have handled the Civil War. What a waste. Uh, Code 2 in the Civil War. Fuck was the point. Oh, don't move the fuck back. What? No. I looked at the spreadsheet that people use to find the composers, and they have the Tokyo Xanadu sequel that says Two Kyo Xanadu, which you now be using constantly. That's a good one. This motherfucker, I fuck. <laughs> This is the perfect way of putting him, because he's the most important motherfucker, and he feels like it. This is a man- Ozzy is a man who knows he's important and wants everyone else to know, too. Secret Roaring Snake? Secret Roaring Snake for now. Yeah. That seems about right. They've been building up his imposing presence as third. Honestly, not a bad, not a bad job. So I guess you know what? I can directly go into this because both of them were introduced in third. Ozzy is a person, is an antagonist built up really fucking well. I know. Yeah, no, you heard around the second chapter too. Yeah. Ozzy's, I, th I think the first time we saw him in person was in Code Steel, um, not Code, Code Steel, no fuck. In a third, though. During a, during a door. But, like, Ozzy is built up really fucking well. But frankly, I'm gonna say this. Ozzy is built up better than Ouroboros. Ozzy has, has been built up so fucking much better than Ouroboros has been. And he is amazingly done. Like, he, like he feels it. He doesn't feel like he's completely, um, like I like you could never figure out what his plan is. It feels like you might be able to figure out what he wants to do. You understand his overall arcing, overarching goals at least a little bit, and you uh, can actually like figure out what, like you can think about Ozzy. You can figure out what he's might be trying to do. 
Warbors? Who the fuck knows? No one knows. No, there's no fucking information about them in the slightest. Who the fuck knows what Warbors are doing? No one fucking knows. I hate them. Ugh. And then you also have, like, someone like Lecter, who is also really badly done. Like, Lecter gets introduced in third, and he's just been fucking here for a long while. Not really doing anything. And it's like, he's had all this time. He's been a, a, he's been a part, I think he's been showing up in every game since third, for fuck's sake. Which is almost as much time as Ozzy's been getting uh, built up. And he has almost fucking nothing to talk about. Like, God. But saying, you think part of that is that we see more of him that, that we get to see in here than Orbors, which mostly he kept up to this point. Being third, is it okay to compare his looks on third to now? Is this, uh, yeah, fine. Ozzy just also has a lot of present every time he's around. Yeah, no. I I almost feel like Ozzy's an accident. They accidentally did Ozzy really well, and I'm really worried this fucker's gonna get, go bad at some point. I don't want, I like Ozzy as an antagonist right now. I don't want to see him become shit. I did not put she's useless. She's just here for the grub. She's in the bug people section for the grub. Do you not understand? That is her. <laughs> she totally fucking do that. Does anyone want to post in the Discord, um, Ozzy and full art, obviously, for Ozzy of, um, for, for Ozzy and third? Anyone want to do that? You guys are comparing Ozzy of the now versus Ozzy's of Ozzy of the past. So I'm asking. Okay. Okay. I fucking can't believe I joked about that and it was <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like a fucking insane person when stuff like that works out. Like I like I like I say something absolutely batshit insane and just like actually just like what the fuck is happening? He doesn't look quite as, um, he isn't quite as much of a brick house in this one. That's a bit of a shame. I didn't think, I, I, I don't remember, couldn't remember what he looked like in third, but yeah, no. Not as much of a brick house anymore. Hell, you can even, like, with his cheekbones being seen here, he looks like he's gaunt, which is very weird, actually. Because, like, I, you can't, it, it's not as, um, like, you can see his his, his uh, eyebrow is still working and everything, and like his very furrow, furrowed look, but yeah. Also, I just realized this man has a Minecraft fucking nose. Look at that shit. He's always had a weird nose. Not that it's pronounced in the neuro stuff. Yeah, which honestly works good for him. 
gives him less of a gaunt look than uh, this does. Now we gotta add lines for every- oh, wait, fuck, right, this motherfucker. And also these fucks. Yeah, these fucks. Makes him just look old. Azure makes him look actually intimidating. And Kotil kept up with that. Yeah, no, it, it works well. Um, I wonder how Estelle and Joshua look in this style. Again. Jimbro. Okay, hold on, I gotta fucking, where, where the fuck is, is this man? I need to find, find him again, hold on. did this happen? I I don't understand. I I'm like I'm absolutely fucking baffled about this. How the fuck can you know that what or like you are how the fuck? I really thought this man would have known like oh yeah, Orboros is a massive organization. They're not a crime syndicate. Who the where the, who the fuck told him they were a crime syndicate? Who gave him that information? You couldn't be much wronger. to say about that because I'm just baffled that he wouldn't know their, like, I don't expect him to know all the details about Ouroboros or anything, but, like, I would have thought he knew, like, oh, yes, they're a massive organization, like, uh-huh? The most charitable interpretation is that he's belittling them and tempting fates. That's, that, that is an incredibly charitable organize, uh, interpretation, Glyphs, yes. It just doesn't come across in the slightest. It comes across as if he actually believes, oh, yes, he's a fucking, uh, yeah, 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 he, he, he's, uh, he, he, he really doesn't actually understand shit. on here, of course. Uh, I need to adjust this weight. Okay, first off, eight. Second off, big one. Third off, delete. Remake it. Second off, third off. Did I say something I got? 
I should probably, you know what? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Now this is far the fuck away, but I need a connector to Lloyd. Change it to solid type, change it to good coloring. Up here now. Here now. Good. Lloyd? Up. Oh, you literally said that personal pet peeve carry on. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. Oh yeah, no, she said she she uh she said that uh green disturbed a barrier. And that they must be kept like that's that was a problem. So she likes barriers. So she she's she's fucking Lloyd's mortal enemy. Obviously. I need to say a connector to Lloyd. Wow, I'm a fucking dumbass then. Holy shit. doesn't necessarily destroy barriers, just gets over them. Yeah, but if someone maintains a shit barrier over and over again, I think Void would be best. He's still calling Reen Lloyd and even Lloyd Reen a few times ago. So look, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's not, um, okay. It might, it might be, it might be a bit fucked. I'm turning into Yuna. Stop. Uh, no. Okay. Got my everything. Okay. Okay. Who else we got to talk about right now? Hmm. <laughs> that's just there now, and that's gonna be distracting in some ways. Okay. I need to add more shit overall. A couple people. Um. Oh, right. Where's Randy again? There he is. Okay. Nothing for Celestine. I'll get to Celestine in a bit. First, I need to just keep adjusting other people. Customized a horse. Oh, so, so nice. So, 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 I appreciate yeah, so, so good. Okay. <clears throat> We're already adding a lot of shit here, so we need to add even fucking more. Here. Yeah, good. Fine. Yeah, come on. Down. Yep, good.
We're gonna need that remind BB to check out that photo bro thing that BB gave him. That behind that smile lies a fucking punch to the gut for looking at it. Oh god, the lines are starting to go crazy again. Mm. Second board, he's still in chapter one, 45 percent. 45 percent board is still fucking massive. Look, I'm sorry. I know he cut uh, ah shit. Randy! Randy, you fucking hurt my girls! Oh thank you. fuck. Okay, this board's already getting a bit more, uh, board's already getting a bit more chaotic, right? Oh, fuck, that's right, uh, I wrote down a note. Something about being... Curve is with someone. Didn't I write that, type that down at some point? Or am I going crazy? Yeah. Emil, I don't remember the context of that. And Perv and Claire know each other. Okay. I'll leave them the same size, right? I'm sorry. Okay, I'll do that. Oh, come on. I can connect in the way I want. Stop. Fine. Okay. Wavy. Put the fuck down there. goodness it's like the tight it's like a tidal wave of connections going all the way to lloyd wow hmm. i haven't really got a reason why he's called scarecrow yet huh you added me okay Fine, clips. It's totally fine. Not at all horrible. Did I say Lloyd again? <laughs> what the fuck? 
<laughs> by his cross belt can on my mind so hardcore. Because he's scared of Crow, notice how Lecter and Crow were never in the same room at the same time. I feel like that's not entirely true. Like, do I have any miscellaneous theories to add? Oh, yeah, um... Made any connections for Lauren Fee? Fuck me. So bad at this right now. Oh, I'm shit. Celine will show up in her own mech and I'll hate her more for not having mentioned she had one. I would be quite annoyed. Maribel yesterday? Is that bell trauma? Oh, fuck. I should mention that here. Oh, no. To Laura Doobie? Probably. Like these other easy, there's a fucking mess already. You're only three hours in the game. Well, three normal people hours. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Steam is telling me that I have 24 fucking hours in this game already, which is. Yeah, that, that makes sense.
Guys, this is not confusing at all, right? This is all fine and dandy. You guys can read everything. It's all readable. It's all very easy to understand. Hmm. easy to understand are two completely different things right now, aren't they? Why did you have to point that out? How the fuck do I get this over to there? How many arrows are on ring? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six currently are directly on ring. Oh wait, nope, sorry, seven. Seven are currently on ring. Which, yeah, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. I might want to put Reen in his own box in the center. If I have to rearrange everything, I'll probably end up doing that. Is this nonsense I'm working with already? So that's all for, I think that's all for the character parts of this. Hi, Ozzy. Do I have anything else to think about for here?
Nope, yeah, that's about it for now, I think. Or, well... Yeah, no, that is... Okay, yep. That should be good on there, then. Yeah, this should be good. This took me an hour and a half still to get this far, but okay. Okay. Uh, now, no, 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 now, that means, now, now it's time to read. Now it's time for us to read, uh, freaking um, hero stuff. Because we have some books we got that I didn't read, uh, because I specifically was saving them for this day. Already a bunch of stuff on this, on the board, and this is only, uh, the second board. Yep. Okay, there's a lot more books this time around. Okay, uh, The Immoral Hero. Part one, birth of a hero. A long time ago, a boy named Mark to live in Shino and his, with his younger, with Shino, his younger brother. Remember to look at that picture later. I will. I don't have it now, obviously, so. Uh, Mark consciously sought attention and desired to become a great swordsman to protect his hometown, so he devoted himself to sword training. Shino was very shy and looked up to Mark, following him around and imitating everything he did. As time went on, Mark indeed became a great swordsman, with strength easily surpassing all others. One day, a large monster ambushed the town, and the townsfolk asked for soldiers to protect them. While some people fled in terror, Mark stood strong and headed toward the monster. Mark was five years old, by the way. I'll protect my hometown, Mark cried valiantly. And if I ever curl NBC chats, people would literally go insane. I'm already going insane. His sword was not fit to dispatch the monster. They refused to give up and attack the monster with all his might. By the time the soldiers arrived, the monster had turned tail and ran, and Mark probably stood there on the battlefield, covered in blood and gashes. Thanks to Mark's heroic efforts, not a single person was injured, and peace was bestowed upon the town once again. A mother clutching her baby thanked Mark, for she lived close to where the monster had appeared. Thank you, Mark, the mother said. You saved me and my child. I would tell her stories of your heroics when she is older. The baby smiled at Mark. Mark would never forget her smile. Everyone in the town praised Mark's bravery and regarded him as a local town hero. Happy that his hard work was paying off, Mark devoted himself to his sword training even more. By the way, his brother was getting fucking, was having a bad image of himself at this point, probably, right? Yeah. After that day, Mark always received praise and adoration from the town's oak whenever he and Shino went. He was given special treatment at popular establishments to receive gifts from many people. Shino was awed by how much people admired his brother. How do I become a hero? He asked one day. It's simple, Shino, Mark responded. First, you get strong like me. Then, when you defeat a truly horrible monster, you get recognition and finally become a hero. Shino nodded his brother's advice. Okay, I'll work hard to become a strong and a, to become strong and be a hero too. Something had changed within Shino the day Mark became a hero. It seems that Mark always did everything right while Shino was destined to fail. Shino had given it in to this idea, but he had given up on himself and his dreams in the process. But today, Shino had finally realized his dream, which was to become a hero. He would no longer live in his brother's shadow, but instead devote himself to becoming exactly like his brother. Uh oh. Uh, this is starting to sound. It sounds good in theory, but the immoral hero, it, I think this kind of says enough already. And from that day on, Shino studied under the, his brother's tutelage in order to become a hero. Mark continued his heroics and felling monsters whenever they scour scourged the town. With each passing day, Mark's swordsmanship grew. Eventually, he was able to tear common monsters asunder without batting an eye. After battles, Mark would always wipe the blood off his sword in a stunning fashion, which gave Shino a sense of pride and drive he needed to improve his own swordsmanship. However, all the animation and praise Mark received finally went to his head, and he came to the conclusion that it was superior to everyone. I'm the only one defeating monsters around here, Mark arrogantly told the townsfolk. Give me the same treatment as those two cowardly faced evil is an insult to my heroism. Shino didn't know any heroes, but Mark, he began to believe that what his brother said was true. This pushed his desire to be a hero even more. Uh-oh. Sounds like we're going to have a very dark, cautionary tale. <laughs> Kobe and the mu M Museum. I'm sorry, what? Kobe goes to the museum. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Kobe who lived near Bonnet with his parents. One day, his parents took him to the magnificent Imperial Museum, which contained the Empire's turbulent history. He saw lots of war crimes there. However, 10 people reenacting those war crimes. However, Kobe was too young to understand and thought the museum was an old, boring place with old, boring exhibits. His mother gave him a warning. There's so many people inside the museum, so don't let go of my hand, okay? Kids and their parents who become lost inside the museum will be devoured by demons. 
Makobe didn't listen to his mother's words. The end, he got to eaten by demons. Yeah, whatever, he muttered under his breath. Several minutes later, Kobe grew bored with the museum and wanted to go exploring. While his parents were distracted by an exhibit, Kobe let go of his mother's hands and wandered around the museum. He waded through the sluggish crowd and ended up in an open room. There was a large mural on display with a winged dragon and powerful beasts. Kobe was moved by these mythical creatures, but soon felt disappointed by realizing they couldn't possibly exist in real life. There was an old painting hanging next to the mural. There was lots of small, sealed caskets painted a variety of shapes of sharp, vibrant colors. Kobe stared at this painting and felt uneasy. One of the caskets in the painting had its lid ajar, and the paint on the casket was peeling. Kobe wasn't sure what the painting meant, but he was drawn to it nonetheless. He continued to stare at the painting until someone spoke up from behind him. You like this painting? Kobe whirled around. There was a girl slightly older than him, standing there with a warm smile. The girl continued without waiting for Kobe's answer. Museums are so quiet, I only have old stuff lying around, which is boring. But I really like this painting. Kobe was drawn to the girl for having the same thoughts as him. I feel the same way. Look how this casket opened here. It's like the color just popped out of it. The girl's face brightened and she took Kobe's hand. You really get each other. I found something else cool. Want to come see it with me? Kobe's face also brightened at having a companion. Agreed to go with her. I are Erebonia books, or Erebonian children books all about how things are not going well and how you have a bad feeling about what's going to happen next? The two walked around the museum together, exploring different rooms and exhibits. Kobe loved what the girl showed him, and he completely forgot how bored he had been with his parents. I've been stuck in the hospital up until now, the girl admitted. I'm really glad I can explore the museum with you, she added, blushing. Thanks, I like being with you way more than being with my parents, Kobe confessed. The girl looked concerned and asked where his parents were. I left them at the exhibit, Kobe said, shrugging. I got bored being with them. The girl nodded. I see. They finally finished exploring the museum. Wait, the girl said. I want to show you something super special before you go. Kobe didn't question the girl's words, and she took him by the hand again. The museum crowd began thinning out. The pair assumed themselves in an empty room. There was an ancient door before them. Kobe felt as if the door was staring honestly at them. It's past here. The door is too heavy for me to open, the girl said. But that's why you're here. You're a strong boy, aren't you? She ushered Kobe to close the door. You can open it. Kobe placed a hand on the door's handle as the girl kept encouraging to open the door. Wow. Holy shit. This <laughs> Both of these books just say bad things will happen soon, I, I feel. Yeah, I read this one already. Oh god, this is- I'm getting fucking flashbacks to Crimson. Heartless Edgar. Chapter 1. Autumn Dawn. Rays of light spilled through the curtains, spraying the walls of the bedroom before finally coming to rest my face. It's just a door. What could happen? What could go wrong? Star Door 14. I suddenly opened my bleary eyes and made my way to the window. I gently touched my fingertips against the dew-covered glass, feeling the sun's warmth. I turned around to see you still lying in bed, asleep. The tranquil expression was illumined by the same dawn light that had stirred me from my slumber. I moved in close, pressing my nose against yours, but you didn't stir. I gently stroked your hair, but you still refused to wake. In, one attempt to, in a final attempt to rouse you, I pinched your cheek. Uh, Moondor 14? Fuck you, I don't remember the exact one. Stardor? It must be Stardor. Stardor 15? God damn it, I messed it the fuck up again. I fucking keep messing this up. Because Star Door 14 is the last Star Door you can fucking see. Keep messing this shit up. Bro, all you did was make a face and roll over. Suddenly chuckling to myself, I straightened the bed sheets and left the room. I went to the kitchen and began warming up the soup left over from last night. Next, I started making the salads we were going to have for lunch later. Lettuce, ham, and hard-boiled eggs. I cut up a tomato, taking care to only add the slices to one of the salads. After all, you don't like tomatoes. I remember you telling me the story. I think I was about four years old. My father tried to feed me a tomato and I spat right back at him. I have no idea why, but I just can't eat them. You laughed and looked away, a twinge of guilt pat laying across your eyes. What? Just as I finished up with the food, I saw the bedroom door swing open. Good morning, you said, stretching. It was clear you'd enjoyed your doze. Hey, Edgar. You looked at me. Edgar, you called my name. Edgar, you called my name over and over. Hey, Edgar, you, huh? My eyelids snapped open. My eye ears were suddenly filled with sound. I was in a restaurant in town. Sitting across from me was my friend Henry. His long green hair was unkempt, as though he just rolled out of bed. A small trail of steam rose upward on the hot plate of food he had in front of him. I understood instantly what was going on. Um, can I get you some water? The waitress, Clementine, was standing over us. I looked up into her eyes. They were as clear and blue as the summer sky. Oh, yeah, I... Henry started to say. 
No, we're okay. Don't worry about us. I interrupted. Sometimes looked confused, but stepped away to see to the other customers. What do you mean, don't worry about us? What if I'm thirsty? Henry fur furrowed his brow at me. I don't want to bother her, I said, glancing in Clementine's direction with a breeze moment. Bother her? Just a glass of water, man. Henry sighed and began sullenly chomping on his food. Here, have mine too. I pushed the plate, bearing my untouched sandwich toward him. My head's all muddled. I don't think I have much of an appetite anymore. That's been happening a lot lately. You okay, man? Henry's dour expression turned to one of concern. I'm not sure. He even flashes this one scene. It's like a memory, but I don't recognize it at all. I raised my gaze and saw another glance at Clementine as she walked through the restaurant, smiling and talking with the customers. Henry followed my gaze toward her, and a look of understanding came over his face. Now the thing about it, this all started after you first noticed her, huh? I should have known. I've seen the sad eyes of a lovesick fool before, he nodded himself knowingly. Is that what it is? I questioned Henry, yet I couldn't take my eyes off Clementine. Well, I guess you know me best, Henry. As I spoke, Clementine knows my gaze and gave me a warm smile before returning to her work. I don't seem to know myself anymore, I sighed. All my dearest friend would give in response was a troubled chuckle. September. September encounter, 1294. Lemon State, home to the headquarters of the Epstein Foundation. I had planned to devote my time here to performing research alongside the other members of the Foundation. Then I found love. Chapter 2. My Name. When did my feelings for Clementine first start? I couldn't remember the exact day. All I knew was that for whatever reason, I couldn't stop thinking about her. Every day, I'd find myself going to the restaurant. Once I got there, I'd spend my meal watching her, gazing at her flaxen braids, swinging behind her she flirted to and fro. I don't know what she thought about me. Did she like my voice? Did she think I was handsome? Did she feel the same way I did? These thoughts would bubble up in my mind and fade away. Hey, people don't like it when you stare at them like some kind of creeper, you know? Henry entered my thoughts with his usual blunt tone. We were at the restaurant, just like any other day. But I'm not a creeper, I said, briefly turning my eyes off of Clementine. He flashed a look at me that told me he was unimpressed with my response. Look, I come here with you every day, and you just sit in a corner and stare at her. At this rate, I'm worried that they, when they toss you in jail for stalking, they'll throw me in there too, as your accomplice. <clears throat> Is coming here every day all it takes for me to be a soccer? No, but that's not the issue. You, wait, why am I even explaining this to you? Henry's frustration with me was clearly mounting. He has repoused, I answered. He let out an exaggerated sigh and threw his hands up in defeat. After a moment, however, he put on a serious expression and leaned in toward me. But for real, man, what are you going to do today? You really just plan to come here day after day? Yeah. Can't really think of anything else to do, I shrugged. Henry shook his head at me. Ah, uh, that's not gonna get your feelings across here. Then what do I do, I asked. Just gotta tell her how you feel. Just go over there and say it. Raise yourself for the worst and just say it. Henry told me. I guess if you're too scared of that, the safe way would make her like you more first. How do I do that? Should I, I shrug to think of something that lovers do? Um, hold her in my arms or something like that? Speak for real, man. Henry raised an eyebrow at me. Okay, if I were to give an example off the top of my head, is that how you treat a paying customer? Suddenly, Henry was interrupted by the sound of a drunk man yelling at someone on the other side of the restaurant. I looked over to see who was so he was so riled up at. It was Clementine. Sorry, sir, but I'm working right now. I can't do that, she said. You got a hint of fear behind her professional tone. All I'm asking is to give it, have a little drink with me. Come on, girl, let's have some fun. The man spoke his words clearly deep in his cups. Oh, well, something like that, actually. Henry nodded at the scene playing out before us. Are you swooping to save the day like this? When she's in trouble? Sure, she'll think better of you. So you should probably say out this one, to be honest. Henry leaned back in his chair and put out his calm warmant. This might be a bit more than you can handle, so you better leave it to the pros. Okay, got it. I stood and began walking toward Clementine. Hey, wait! I heard Henry exclaim as I left, but I ignored him and kept going. Huh? Who are you supposed to be? Even later, talking, you can have your turn later. I smell the alcohol in his breath from an arge away. I'm here to talk to you, actually. As I said this, the man's unfocused gaze froze on me. I would not bother the other customers in here, so why don't we talk outside, he continued. Huh? I got nothing to talk to you about. You want to go outside, go on your own. Like I said, I'm talking to the lady here. The man's face grew redder. Oh, she clearly doesn't want to talk to you, so let's go outside already, I retorted. The man's expression quickly twisted into a raid scowl as he shot out of his seat, knocking over everything on the table with a loud clatter. Turned out he was much bigger than me. You couldn't fucking tell? What is? What was he, sitting in a chair for toddlers so you couldn't see how big he was? Don't try to act big, you little shit, or you're going to get hurt. Please go back to your seat. I can handle this. Sometimes said as she put herself between the man and me, but you're shaking. With her right in front of me, I was able to see clearly. Tears welled up in her eyes, and she pursed her lips slightly and gave me a determined look. I'm not moving from the spot until you go back, her voice cracked her so slightly. Oh yeah? Does that have to move you then? The man shoved Clementine aside and grabbed at my collar. Oh, fuck. At the same time, he swung his fist at my face. Where he was about to make impact, I heard a commotion from behind him. That's enough! Several sets of hands grabbed him, stopping his punch mid-swing and holding him in place. We got a report of a disturbance. Both of you, stand down! One of them just sta sta stood up. What? One look at their shining badge was all I need to figure out where it was going on. 
Wherever the bracer go, you're coming back with the goat ranch with us. We're all gonna have nice chats in one of the bracers. Bracers, hold on a sec. We weren't fighting. My man, what the fuck? The man quirky let go of me. We're just having a bit of fun, right, kid? Oh, I sure wasn't having any fun. It's an honest answer on my part, but the man didn't seem to appreciate much. His face turned red again and contorted with anger. The hell? You shut your damn mouth, you little punk. Before he could do anything, however, Brazers had him pinned on the floor. That's enough. Come along quietly. Man, they're not doing this the Estelle way. Estelle would just whack down on the head and knock him out. The Brazers subdued him and began leading him out of the restaurant. Despite his anger only a moment ago, the man began sobbing. Please don't call my mom, ma, okay? I'm begging you. I watched him walk out the door. Just as I was about to turn and check in the time, one of the Brazers put his hand on my shoulder. He's a well-built man who was clear from his impression that he took his job seriously. I would later learn his name was Boris. You guys are a lifesaver, I turned to him and said. He was taking care of him. We have to bring you in too, you know. What the f- Boris said as he tightened his grip on my shoulder. After all, both parties are blame when a fight breaks down. Didn't they teach you that in school? Both parties, huh? I said- What the fuck? Why are we going with schoolhouse rules? That's fucking stupid! You- Like, I- You take him in for- for to ask him a couple questions. That's all you fucking do. You don't take him in because he's to blame for this shit. When the police get involved, it's not like the f what? Well, Boris, you ate a shit first introduction. Everything that had been gone had gone on the fast few minutes I over my mind with. As I was lost my days, Boris led me out of the restaurant with the other bracers. After Edgar led the restaurant with the bracers, sometimes just stood there shocked. Sheesh, sorry about the commotion my pal caused. What the fuck are you guys talking about? To a voice from behind him, her. Sometimes he gets so stubborn, not even I can stop him. He just runs off and does whatever he feels like. He can kind of be a pain. Miss Henry, he allowed a chuckle that resolved Edgar's clumsy attempt at heroism. Ken Lyon seemingly stared at the door Edgar had been a score three moments ago, however. No sense. Henry's laugh for laughing tapered out awkwardly. Um, are you okay? Who is he? She asked. Huh? Your friend. What's his name? Clementine, can you gaze at the doorway as she asked? Oh, right. Henry stammered, slightly flustered by the unexpected question. It's Edgar. Edgar. Clementine mumbled to herself. I didn't get to thank him. Watching well, Clementine lost in her thoughts, Henry could only manage a wry grin. Ah, I get it now. This is the scenario. This is this is an AU. Okay, so guys, this is an Heartless Edgar is a AU story about uh, Anton and uh, his and his friend. It's an AU story about them. You can see it, right? This is an AU. Alternate universe. Yay. Rick and Anton? Yeah, it's an, it's a, it's an, it, 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 someone saw their adventures and were like, well, I gotta write a story about this. Completely misinterpreting that Anton is a fucking failure when it comes to women. Except Sharon, who is fine with him, actually. Oh shit, I just remembered something I should add to the board. What if Wizen bought a book series from the future to pass the time and it was this and it is Ricky and Anton fictionalized? I'd fucking love it. What if we actually see the series play out in Curl, BB? I'd be iffy on that. Uh, and during Northern War, Green got too much edge and almost hurt someone. He could. Okay, there we go. That was all. That, that was that was it. That was all I wanted to add. Okay. Okay. Thank you all for coming to today's live stream of board creations. I hope you guys enjoyed and also enjoyed the reading too. That was uh, that was something or another. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's about it for now. So we'll be going. 
thank you all for coming. Uh, tomorrow I will be streaming at 8 p.m., possibly even 7.30 p.m. if I get home soon enough for some Yumi Neko, so I can hopefully fucking get to at least something exciting happening there. And uh, if this is the first time coming to your stream, I suggest you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're aware where I'm streaming. If you liked anything about the video, leave a like. If you have any comment, leave a comment down below. And until next time, I'm going to get up close. I'm going to get quiet. And I'm going to say, bye.